Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the workshop and course on molecular physical and computational virology. Now that uh, we have covered uh, the basic of Linux command and file management, it's time to dive into something even more powerful and exciting. Uh, it's uh, bash scripting. So if you have uh, ever felt like uh, you are uh, constantly running the same command or repeating tasks manually, then you are in for a treat. So bash scripting is the key to automating workflows and simplifying complex processes, making your work not only more efficient, but also more enjoyable. Uh, but before we start with the with bash scripting, I would like to to talk about why bash scripting is so useful, especially in bioinformatics and computational biology. So uh, bash scripting allows you to combine multiple uh, commands into a single executable file, making your work faster and uh, more efficient. Uh, it's uh, incredibly useful in fields like uh, bioinformatics where, where we often need uh, to handle large data sets, run a batch process, or automate the analysis of sequence simulations or any kind of computational task. So in, in machine running and analysis of thousand, thousands of uh, files or orchestrating complex simulations, doing this manually would take forever. Instead, with uh, bash scripting, you can automate those tasks, letting your computer to do heavy lifting while you focus on the more interesting part of the project, for example. So what's what makes uh, bash scripting so powerful? Uh, because uh, I mean, bash script lets you, for example, automate task. Uh, this is uh, perfect for repetitive processes like analyzing uh, genomic data or simulation data or managing multiple simulations at times. Uh, for example, combining uh, commands, you can string. Uh, uh, together several Linux uh, commands into one script, simplifying complex tasks, uh, and also good to customize uh, your, your workflow, um, tailor scripts to suit uh, the exact need you, your experiment or analysis need, um, whether it's uh, file handling, pattern searching, or interacting with other programs. So in bioinformatics, where massive uh, data are common nowadays, the ability to quickly and efficiently automate data processing with bash script is a game changer. Uh, whether it's organizing sequence, analyzing data, or managing computational workflows, bash script allows you to do it uh, all with just a few lines of codes. And uh, so let's. Uh, dive in and start exploring how to write and use bash scripting to automate your your own workflows so uh, all right let's uh, I mean let's start uh, talking about the bash scripting and what it actually is uh, bash is, is scripting is all about writing a series of uh, of comments in a file as i said that uh, the shell the bash shell can execute uh, one after another. So instead of manually typing each command into the terminal every single time, you can create uh, a script that automates tasks for you. So in essence, uh, a bash script uh, is uh, really just a program written in the bash language. So you are essentially creating a list of instructions that uh, bash uh, will run in in the order you specify. Uh, what's uh, what's amazing about it is uh, that you only need to write the command once, and then you can run uh, the script over and over uh, whenever you need it. So this uh, can uh, uh, I mean this can save you a lot of time for for sure, and ensures that. Uh, your work is consistent every time you run the script. So uh, 
bash scripting is it's a it's a, a simple concept but it's uh, incredibly powerful especially when you start working with a large data set or repetitive task and instead of manually running 20 commands uh you uh let the script do it for you automatically and efficiently so bash scripting is a fundamental skill for anyone working in linux and as you get deeper into computational biology and bioinformatics or other computational tasks you will see how essential it can be in streaming your your own work for example all right let's talk about a little bit uh, about why bash scripting is so important uh, and say let's say uh, spot a, a couple of uh, characteristics um especially if you are working in obviously in linux or uh any uh, unix based system like like mac for example macintosh so uh automation is one of the biggest reason to to learn bash scripting uh because for example if you have a repetitive task like uh, backing up files or doing runtime uh, system maintenance or whatever uh, bash script can handle those tasks automatically uh, instead of manually repeating step every day uh, a script can do it uh, all for you saving your time and, eff and effort obviously another important task uh, an important skill is uh, the efficiency bash script helps you work faster and with fewer errors when you uh, manually perform tasks uh, there is uh, always the risk to of uh, the risk of making mistakes as it's commonly human being uh, but with a script you write the code once uh, you check the code and if everything is fine then you can perform the task consistently every time uh, so this is especially useful for more complicated uh, tasks that require multiple steps uh, then um uh the customization is another important skill uh because with bash you can create custom workflows tailored uh, to to your your specific needs uh, if you are doing something regularly in the terminal you can script it uh, and this gives you full control over your environment letting you design a process that uh, work exactly how you want and then in system administration uh particularly for anyone in system administration or the development field and the the bash script are uh bash script are essential for uh for managing servers monitoring resources or for automating tasks like uh, backups or and so for the deployment so instead of doing everything manually you can create scripts um, that help you um, uh, making system management much more efficient and then um, the work uh, works everywhere which uh, means uh, another sense of portability because bash is widely available on uh, almost all linux and unix systems meaning that scripts you write can be run on any machine with minimal or no changes so this makes bash a highly portable and versatile scripting language that you can use anywhere whether you are working or on your own computer or managing a fleet of servers for example so summary and this uh part uh, learning bash scripting helps you automate routines routines task uh, work more efficiently and gives you more control over your system so it's an essential skill uh if you want to check the most out of uh, working with with linux so all right let's <clears throat> dive into uh two core concepts for bash scripting uh let's say loops and conditionals uh, this these are incredibly useful tools 
because they give you control over how your scripts behave. Um, in this case, conditionals allows you, uh, I mean, allows your script to make decisions um, while looped, uh, let you repeat actions multiple times, for example. But so let's start with conditionals. And this example here, uh, uh, we I, uh, we are using the the if statement in bash scripting. The if statement is uh, one of the most common ways to to add uh, decision making to your scripts. Uh, in this case, uh, it um, it called uh, check if a certain condition it met. Uh, and based on that, uh, it runs specific commands. Uh, let's explain this in a, in, in a bit. Uh, so if, uh, in this case, if the condition is true, uh, one set of commands will run, and if the condition is false, uh, another set of uh, commands will be, will be run. Uh, so in this example, this is a basic example, uh, which check if the file or if a file exists, uh, and let's see how how this uh, 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 toy script uh, works. So in this uh, example here, the first line of the code uh, or the if statement, this check if file uh, dot txt exists and is a regular file. Uh, and then the um, so the the minus f option here is the flag that checks for file existence. So if the file exists, the script will print the file exists. Uh, this is the print function of bash, and uh, this is the sentence we want to print if the file exists. And then uh, otherwise, if the file um, uh, does not exist here with the else. Uh, so the scripts, uh, we run the other part of the, of the uh, function of the script here, which is the file does not exist. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so uh, this type of conditionals allows you to create script that react to the environment. Uh, so in this case, checking for files, or could be also validating inputs or making decision based on real time conditions. But um, why use conditionals? Uh, conditionals are critical in bash scripting because they allow you to, for example, validate things like whether file or directory exists uh, before trying to use them. Uh, it also, uh, it's helpful for handle errors gratefully by testing if commands run successfully or also uh, for example customized behavior depending on different inputs or system states so by mastering if statement and conditionals you can create smart adaptable script that handle a variety of uh, situations automatically all right so let's explore a bit more into how we can use loops and conditionals um, in bash script to automate tasks especially in fields like uh, computational biology and the informatics where you often work with large data sets so in this example we'll see how you can use an if statement uh, to check for a specific chain in in a pdb file uh, just to recall you, uh, PDB file uh, is a format file used to store the 3D structure of proteins, uh, as you probably know. Um, so here in this uh, in this more real script, uh, we are uh, checking for a chain in a PDB file uh, using the if statement, the the, con the if conditional. So um, in this case, suppose you need to determine whether a specific chain, let's say chain A, exists in a PDB file. Well, uh, use uh, the grep command to search for it. 
So here is the script and let's see how it works. Uh, the first part of the code here, uh, we define the PDB file and the chain, ID, the chain ID we are interested in. So we save uh, in this variable, the, the name of the file we are interested in to analyze and we save in this other variable chain to check the, uh, the, the, the chain ID we are interested in the iterators in. So using then using uh, the grep command for for the search uh, in this part of the code uh, at the if statement, uh, we use grep to uh, search for lines that start with uh, the, the keyword atom uh, and uh, the ones which contain the the chain we are interested in. And then uh, here the minus Q option uh, quietly checks for the pattern and uh, returns a yes or no uh, answer. So without printing to the terminal. And then um, and the, th the third part of the, the code, let's say um, the conditional uh, check, um, I mean, the, if uh, if the chain is found, the script will print uh, the PDB file contains the chain, the, the chain we are interested in. Otherwise, uh, we print that uh, the, the file uh, doesn't contain uh, the chain we are interested. So why this is important? So in bioinformatics, uh, tasks like uh, checking the presence of a specific chain or even sequence uh, pattern uh, in a file can be uh, repetitive and time consuming if you done it manually. Um, but uh, with bash scripting, you can automate this task. Uh, so in this case, we uh, check whether a particular chain exists in a PDB file, making the process efficient and uh, obviously error free. All right, so now let's dive into one of the most powerful tools in bash scripting. Uh, in this case, the for loop. Uh, this tool is uh, is incredibly useful when you need to to repeat actions. Essentially, uh, when uh, when working with uh, multiple files or repeated tasks, so instead of writing the same command over and over, you can automate the process and make your script much more efficient. So here the for loop uh, in bash allows you for allows you to, for example, to go through a list of items uh, like uh, files in this case, in this example, and um, it allows you to perform actions on each on each one. So here in this, in this toy example here, the this uh, part of the code, the first line, uh, this tells uh, Bash to look at every file that ends with uh, .dxt. Here, this symbol here means uh, it's a it's it's a a wildcard because that match all files with with this extension. Uh, so each time the loop uh, runs, uh, a file here this variable represent one of those uh, txt file in their, their directory. Uh, then the, the this word do, uh, this begins the block of commands that will run for each file. And then this line of the code means, uh, as you can see, uh, this prints out the message uh, of processing a such file so you can track which file is being worked on and then in the second line of the of the code block uh this uh, it's use the cat function the cat uh, command to uh, essentially to shows the content of the current file and then at the end uh, is the the done the done uh, reserve word uh, this tell bash that the loop is finished after all 
um, txt file uh, have been processed. So uh, essentially, uh, the script loops through every uh, txt file in the directory, and for each file, it prints a message saying it's uh, processing that file and then displays the its content. So uh, why loops are, are so important? Because using a for loop in bash makes your script far more efficient. Uh, instead of typing commands over and over, you write uh, the loop once and let uh, it uh, handle everything. This is especially useful for uh, processing multiple files, for applying change to many files, handling large data set of logs, or even running calculation on, for example, on different data sets. Okay, let's explore uh, how we can use the for loop uh, in bash scripting to tackle a common bioinformatics problem. For example, extracting unique chain IDs from a PDB file. So for those of you who may not know, uh, as I said before, just to remember, the PDB file store the 3D structure of proteins and these files often have uh, multiple chains depending on the complexity of the protein. So each uh, uh, chain with uh, a unique identifier. So uh, we will write a script. Uh, this is also a toy script, but a little bit more complex, uh, a script to find this unique chain ID automatically. So what does the script do here? Uh, essentially, this script scan a PDB file, identify the unique chain ID, and print them along with the total number of unique chains. So let's break it down step by step in order to see what uh, it happened in each uh, piece of code. So first we uh, specify the PDB, um, the PDB file we want to work with. In this case is called uh, input PDB and we store in this variable with we, which we call PDB underscore file. Uh, so then, um, we create uh, an empty array to store unique chain, uh, unique change ID here. Uh, this is where we will store all the unique uh, change ID that we extract from the PDB. Then uh, we, we do have here a function in bash scripting. We, we also can create functions. Uh, uh, custom, customized functions. In this case, uh, this function essentially uh, is check if an element is actually in the array. Uh, so let's uh, explain a little bit more in deep. First, the the function part here. Uh, the con the function uh, in Bash we have a, a special word called function, which uh, allow you to create functions. And this fun the function we are created is we call contains, and the contain function in Bash is uh, especially designed to check uh, here uh, if a particular value in this case uh, chain ID uh, the chain ID is present in the array uh, in the in the array we created before. Uh, so here, let me explain you uh, how this function works. Um, and uh, okay, the function takes essentially uh, takes a single argument which uh, will be pasted in uh, when when the function is called. Uh, this argument represents the value we want to check if it's uh, uh, in the array. So in your case, uh, it is the chain ID we are looking for, and then. Uh, it's uh, there are declaring a local variable here. Uh, this uh, uh, special word is to declare variables in a local way, and we call the variable e. Uh, this means that the variable e will only be used inside the function and won't interfere 
with any variables outside the function scope. And then uh, there is a for loop here. Uh, this this loop iterates over each element in the in the change array in this list or array. Uh, this um, this syntax here represents all elements of the array uh, chains, and uh, the loop assign each element one at a time to the variable e. And uh, then there is a conditional check here in this other part of the, of the function. In this case, inside the loop, uh, the function check if the current element E uh, is equal uh, to, uh, to the function's first argument. Uh, in this case, the value uh, we are in, interested in, uh, in, we are searching for. So uh, if uh, dollar sign e, uh, I mean, let's say the current array element is equal to dollar sign one, the value we are searching for, the function moves to the next step. Okay, so the next step is the function return zero. So if the value is found in the right, the, the function will return zero. So in bash, uh, our, our return value of uh, of zero typically means success, succeed or uh, true. So this indicates that the value was found in the array. And then um, move forward and uh, uh, the function is done and uh, return one. Uh, it's meaning that if the loop finish without, uh, let's say, finding the value, the function return one, uh, which means uh, false or failure uh, in bash. So this indicates that the value was not found in the array. So as the value won't found in the array, uh, it will, let's see how it add to the array. So at, at here, uh, uh, you call the function, let's see like an example. Uh, you call the function like this, like uh, let's say uh, that function contain, uh, contains and the, the, the argument, uh, it's a one argument. So it contains and the, the chain, then chain name we are interested in, in this case contains A, for example. So the function checks if the chain ID a exist uh, in the in the chain in the chain array. Uh, so if the chain is found, the function will return zero, meaning yes, the array contains this value. Uh, otherwise, if the chain is not found, the function will return one, meaning no, the array uh, does not contain this value. So in this example, the function is typically used to ensure that only unique value are added to the chain array. So in summary of this part, this function um, check if a specific chain ID is already in, in the chain array. So it loops through the array and if the chain is in the, it's found, let's say it's uh, written true or zero, otherwise it's written false. So this, this keeps up uh, from, from having duplicates. So then, there is a there is a for loop here. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the the for loop uh, loop through to the PDB file and extract the chain ID, um, and uh, it's a, there is a check if the chain is already in the right using the function here. As you can see, we are, we are using the function contains and we are checking for for the chain that uh, it's extracted by, by this part of the for loop. Uh, so now, uh, now in this part, essentially, we, we, we get to the head of the script. And this, in this case, this for loop goes through, uh, through the PDB file, searching for lines that, uh, that begins with, um, with the keyword atom. Uh, 
uh, which contain, uh, I mean, the item details. Uh, so in other words, uh, this uh, for loop is designed to process a PDB file, uh, protein data bank file, and extract unique uh, chain ID from it. Let's uh, let's break it down each part of the, this part of the loop to to, under, to understand how it works. Uh, so the, as I said, uh, this for chain in here, uh, this set up a, a loop where where the variable chain uh, will take one value for for from from command output uh, one by one. Uh, then aw key this part of the loop uses the this this uh, um, command uh, the aw key command to extract specific pieces of of data from the pdb fi file and um, it uh, feed them into the loop then uh, the this part of the of the of the command line here uh, tells add aw key to look lines that as i said uh, that begin with uh, with the word atom so uh, in the in 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 a common pdb file lines that uh, start with atom describe the the atoms in the protein structure so this common filters uh, out uh, only the the relevant lines from the pdb file that describe atoms then uh, this part of the code here uh, prints, uh, uh, I mean, for each line that contain the, the name atom, uh, this extract a substring, uh, which starts, um, from the, uh, the, the, uh, the 22nd character in this case, and it takes only one character. Okay. Uh, so this character represent in this case the character in the column in the character twenty two or twenty second let's say uh, it's uh, it's representing the the chain ID we are looking for. Then um, this uh, dollar sign zero refers to to the entire entire line of the text file. Okay. So it extracts uh, the whole line and extract the, the character uh, 20 second of the line, uh, which in this case is a chain ID. Uh, so the result of AWQ, uh, sorry, AWU key. Uh, so for, for every line that start with atom, uh, this command uh, extract the chain ID and pass it to to the for loop. Uh, so for each uh, for each chain for each chain uh, for each chain value, let's say extracted by by this AWU key command, the loop check if the chain is already in, in the right chain. So here there is an if statement. Uh, using the function we created before and passing through the function the uh, variable chain, which is the actual um, chain ID in, in the actual line of the PDB file. Uh, so uh, in this case, the contain function return, uh, as we have said, return zero if the chain is already in the right and one if, the, if it isn't. And uh, here, this uh, this symbol here, um, um, that means not. So this check if if the contains function uh, returns false. In other words, if uh, in other words, it checks if the chain is not already in the array. Um, so then, uh, if chain is not in the array. Um, pass through the next step. Uh, so this line adds uh, it to the chain array. In this case, we are adding the chain we uh, we are uh, looking for. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, this using this way, only unique chain ID are, are stored. 
in order to don't uh, duplicate the, the change, the chains, sorry. Um, as sorry, as a summary of this uh, this part, uh, the the command awu key uh, extract the chain ID from lines in the PDB file that start with atom. The loop iterate over each extracted chain ID. For each chain, the script checks if the if it already in the is in is already in the in the chains array using the con the contains function. Then, if the chain is not in the array, it added to to the array, and at the end of the loop, only unique chain ID are stored in the chains array. So this approach is useful for identifying unique chain ID in a PDB file, ensuring that no duplicates are stored. So, uh, continuing with uh, with the next step of the of the script. Uh, so. Uh, there is a count, uh, count the number of uh, unique chain ID. So uh, once the loop the loop finish, um, we count how many unique chain ID we have found by checking, for example, the length, the length of 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 the the chains array, and we print that number, uh, and then we have an an output here. Um, we output the name of the chains uh, here using echo and uh, the print function and uh, using um, the sentence we want to print using here the variable that means uh, that we print the actually the the name of the chains. Uh, so finally, we of this uh, step here uh, we. Uh, we print out the actual unique change ID that we have stored in the array. So uh, why this is uh, useful in bioinformatics? Uh, so in bioinformatics and let's say computational biology, working with a large data set, it's common and uh, manually checking for unique chain in PDB file will be tedious, particularly analyzing large data set with uh, thousands of lines. So this script automates the whole process, saving time and um, for sure uh, reducing the chances of human error. Uh, then uh, let's talk about another type of loop in Bash, uh, which is called the while loop. So unlike the for loop, which repeats a set a number of times or iterate over items, uh, a while loop keeps running uh, as long as a condition is true. So this uh, makes it super useful for tasks like reading a file line by line where you don't know and, and uh, I mean, you don't know in advance um, how many lines there are. So uh, why, uh, uh, what is, uh, I mean, what is the, the, the while loop? So the while loop is, uh, essentially designed to to repeatedly execute commands um and uh, uh, the commands uh, will be executed as long as certain condition remains true and let's uh, let's let's see let's let's walk through 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 an, an easy example here a toy example uh, in order to to understand um the, the the use of a while loop uh, and uh, in this case uh, to read a file processing it like by line uh, well in this case <clears throat> this this uh, this first line of the script uh, is the key part of the loop so the read uh, command essentially reads uh, only line by at, at a time so um in this case, it's a reading line at time for a file and I store it in 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 the line uh, variable. And then this part here, uh, the ifs equal, uh, meaning uh, internal file uh, file separator. Uh, an internal fi file separator ensure the that the entire line is uh, read, including spaces and tabs. Uh, so is uh, the entire line is read exactly as it is, 
uh, as it appear in the field in the file, for example. Um, so the minus error uh, option here uh, tells the the read function not to to treat it to treat the backslashes as a special character. So it reads them literally. And then the do uh, work here. This uh, is some special uh, word. This may, this in, marks the start of the loop. So here for each line, uh, we are simply printing the lines content. Uh, here, this part of uh, the code. Uh, so this uh, this uh, prints uh, exactly the line with a, with a prefix line and show you the content of each line as it's processing. And then uh, the loop continue until all the lines from this file uh, have been processed. So the code section, this code section here, tells the loop to take it uh, input from this file. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, see uh, uh, why use a while loop. So um, yeah, or let's say uh, what what I mean. This script essentially uh, reads reads a, a file. In this case, it's a file called file.txt. Uh, one line at a time, and uh, each uh, time print each line uh, to the terminal. So it keeps uh, reading and printing lines until it reaches the end of the file. So this is super helpful, for example, when working with large files, as it uh, processes each line individually without loading the entire file into memory at once. So this is important to don't overload your memory. And uh, let's uh, go to uh, to let's go to see how um, how to use bash scripting uh, with loops and conditionals, especially using the while loop uh, here. Uh, this is a, 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 a little bit more complex script. Uh, uh, but it's a while loop to process a PDB file, which store the, the structure of the protein. In this example, uh, we will look at uh, how we can extract the specific information from lines in the PDB file that uh, start with the atom word, a uh, line that describes, obviously, the atomic the, uh, detail of a protein. So, um, as an overview of this, of, of this script, uh, this script will process uh, a PDB file and pull out three key pieces of information from each uh, atom line. Uh, first, uh, we uh, keep the atom name, the, then the received name and the chain ID. Uh, so let's break down the script uh, line by line. Uh, so here, uh, in this uh, first part of the code, as you uh, can imagine, uh, we specify the PDB file we want to process by storing the file in a variable called uh, PDB file. Uh, then uh, this part of the while loop here uh, reads read the, the, the PDB file line by line. Uh, the the read uh, minus r line command here this uh, store each um, each line a variable called line uh, then the ifs or internal file uh, separator here ensures that uh, the line is read at it as it it is keeping all spaces and tab intact as the previous one as uh, we seen before uh, then uh, there is an if statement here the if statement uh, essentially checks uh, whether the line start with the uh, atom here 
using a regular expression. So if it does, we proceed to extract specific data from the from that line. So we pass to this other part of the code. So uh, in this case, uh, extracting information. Uh, let's uh, let, let's say what we want to extract. We extract the following pieces uh, of information from 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 lines starting with atom. Uh, first, we start uh, extracting the atom name from column uh, thirteen to sixteen. Uh, then we extract the second line here. This uh, we extract residue name from column uh, eighteen to to twenty. And then we extract the chain ID from column 22. So let's, uh, uh, in this case, <clears throat> we use uh, AW key to extract, as we have seen before, how it works. Uh, we extract and we pass the variable uh, line with pipe and we extract this uh, characteristic and we save it in the different uh variable of each one so uh, for each item line the script print then the the for each line the the script print the atom name the residue name and the chain id and, uh, and the loop continue reading and processing the each each line from the pdb file until it reached the end. So uh, here, the this uh, part of the code uh, tells the loop to use it as an input file. So um, uh, as an overview of this script, uh, in general, um, this script scans each line of a PDB file, checking if it starts with Atom. If it does, it extracts the Atom name resume name and the chain ID, and then print this information to the screen. So this allows you to quickly analyze the, uh, the atomic details of a problem. So this example here demonstrate how bash scripting can um, automate the analysis of large data sets like thousands of PDB files, making it uh, a, a powerful tool for bioinformatics and another data heavy tax, for example. So we are reaching the, the end of this uh, lesson, but uh, before we go, let's explore uh, a bit more uh, into bash scripting uh, and how it can help you to edit a PDB file, for example. Uh, so in this example, we are going to, to create a bash script <clears throat> to, to uh, modify uh, chain ID to filter a specific atom and ensure that the the file the PDB file is properly formatted by adding the uh, uh, the ter and end lines and each uh, uh, after each chain ends. So, uh, as any other script we ha I have shown you, uh, it start. Uh, we start defining uh, the input and here the input file and the output file. So uh, and we store it in a uh, in a variable, two different variables for input and for output. Okay, the the script uh, reads the input file uh, and uh, save the processor result into the output file. So then. Here in this section of the of the code, uh, we specify how the chain ID will will change. For instance, uh, here uh, the chain A uh, becomes X, the chain B becomes Y, and the chain C becomes Z, and so on. Uh, if we want to change other chains, we can add other ones. So. Then uh, this uh, part of the code here, um, we filter a specific atom, like uh, let's say uh, al alpha carbon in this case. So the script converts the 
the filter into a regular expression for, for matching multiple items if needed. You can put this kind of uh, 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 search, for example, of filters. And then, uh, so in this case, if you want, uh, this is the, the filter pattern. So you can put several uh, and several uh, filter atoms using this this uh, common uh, uh, regular expressions, and then uh, we process um, the um, the we process with the script. We processes the PDB file line by line using, uh, for example, the AWU key command. Uh, to process each line of the PV and it focus on line starting with um, with the uh, atom uh, with the starting with atom which describe uh, the atom details. So then in this part uh, of the script um, we uh, in this section uh, it's it's. Uh, the this session replace the old change ID with the new ones. Um, so in this uh, uh, it check if the atom match the the filter, uh, for example, CA and print the line if it if does. Uh, so after uh, processing all atoms. Uh, the, the the script add uh, uh, a third line uh, when when it detects that uh, the chain ID uh, uh, mark end of, of a chain um, and then so after processing all line all complete lines uh, the script adds at the end uh, uh, a third and add uh, an end line, which is uh, properly close the um, the PDB file. So uh, the the process file is is saved with uh, the specific output output name. In this case, the out, the output the output will be uh let's say how it's a processed pdb processed dot pdb and uh we we printed uh okay uh process pdb file save it add and the output file here so um uh, why this script is useful uh, and uh, maybe we can explore a little bit more during the course during the face to face uh, classes classrooms um but uh, in structural bioinformatics modifying and format formatting pdb file is a common task uh, so this kind of script automates this uh, modification making it easier to prepare data for analyzing uh, for for example analysis without manually editing imagine editing thousands of files manually is it's not possible so in, with this using this kind of uh, scripts uh, help to manage thousands of files. So uh, um, just finishing as uh, I mean, as we wrap up today class, uh, I want to emphasize just how uh, essential it is to learn Linux and Bash scripting, especially for 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 those of us working in computational and structural biology and bioinformatics so this uh, the the tools we are we are uh, explaining here in in those sessions uh, are um, i mean these tools aren't just helpful they are fundamental to optimizing your workflow and handling the massive data set we often deal with so by mastering linux and bash you gain the ability to automate repetitive tasks, process a large amount of data efficiently, and customize your computational environment to suit your specific research needs. So 
whether you are managing protein structure, running simulations, or analyzing complex data sets, uh, these, these skills will allow you to work faster and with uh, greater accuracy. So in bioinformatics, this is often spent on task, task that, uh, that uh, can be automated with simple scripts, uh, tasks like uh, data extraction, formatting, or batch uh, processing files. So the, the the more proficiency you become with Bash, the more we will uh, uh, find uh, useful streamlining workflows. So reducing errors and focusing on the more critical aspect of your research project. So uh, learning Bash script uh, it's uh, in in Linux environment. It's it's a uh, it's a powerful way to take control of your computational tools and become more efficient, effective, or efficient and is e e efficient in uh, talking and talking the uh, or uh, trying to 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 face challenge of uh, modern structural biology and bioinformatics. So uh, just to to close up. Uh, I, I I hope this class has been helpful not only for 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 the course itself, but also as a practical tool you you can use in your daily daily bioinformatic work. So Bash scripting and Linux are invaluable skills that uh, uh, will streamline many aspects of your research and data analysis. And uh, let's all. Just let me thank you all for your attention and remember that any question you have can be addressed to, to the course and uh, I'm here to help. Uh, so um, I look forward to see you how you apply these tools uh, on your project. So let's see you on the course. See you. Thank you very much.